When the Board of Directors of OC Inc. was deliberating over the persons we wanted to recognize this year, we struggled a bit with how we could adequately acknowledge the work of our next honoree. Over his 10 years at the FCC, Commissioner Michael Copps has been a mainstay of our annual gatherings, and in fact, he delivered the Parker Lecture nine years ago. As he prepared to retire after a decade of service at the Commission, we wanted to find a special way to honor him and his commitment to the public interest in media. And then we were struck by a bit of serendipity. It was 50 years ago this May that Newton Minow, then a brand new FCC chairman, addressed the annual convention of the National Association Broadcasters. Although the speech is remembered as the, quote, vast wasteland speech, it was actually titled, Television and the Public Interest. On that occasion, Chairman Minow said, quote, when television is good, nothing, not the theater, not the magazines or newspapers, nothing is better. But when television is bad, nothing is worse, unquote. Back then, of course, visual media were defined by three television networks rather than the mix of broadcast, cable, and internet outlets we have today. But the challenges we face and the concerns that Chairman Minow raised 50 years ago remain with us today. And so we decided that there was no better way to recognize Michael Copps than with an award that would be as special as he has been, the Newton Minow Award. At a time when government service is often maligned by politicians, it's worth celebrating that Commissioner Copps has spent most of his professional career in public service, whether on Capitol Hill, at the Department of Commerce, or for the past decade at the FCC. When he started his tenure at the FCC, some in the public interest community weren't sure what this veteran Hill staffer and former history professor would be able to contribute to our communications policy debates. But looking back over the past decade, it's now easy to say that no previous commissioner has fought as long, as hard, as effectively, or as valiantly as Commissioner Copps has on behalf of the public interest. Even those who may disagree with the commissioner recognize his profound commitment to engaging the most overlooked segments of society in policy debates. Commissioner Copps believes in our democratic institutions cannot work unless everyone is at the table. And he has taken an extraordinary amount of time and initiative to reach out to so many people and organizations in Washington and across the country to personally invite them to contribute their views to debates at the FCC. When you walk through the, his office, you can see the t-shirt reminders of the nationwide tours where he made time to solicit opinions and feedback, not just from those who can afford lobbyists here in Washington, but churches, community groups, schools, and ordinary people. We could go on and on about his commitment to the public interest, but we know the commissioner still has a lot of work to do before he retires, and we want him to get back to his office so he has time to get it done. Because as Commissioner Copps has so wisely put it, no matter what your first issue is, media reform needs to be your second issue. It is a privilege to recognize Commissioner Michael Copps with this special Newton Minow Award for 10 years of exemplary service at the FCC and for his dedication to preserving the public interest in telecommunications. And I'd also like to call up Nell Minow, the daughter of Newton Minow, to join us now in making this presentation. Thank you all. Thank you uh, very much for your kind and generous words and providing me and my current staff and former staff, some of whom are here today, with a very special and a very memorable moment. First, my hearty congratulations to this morning's other honorees and thanks to each of you for your distinguished service. Thank you, everyone, for being here on this rainy morning so early. There are so many people in this room with whom I've had the pleasure to work during my 10 years at the FCC, and I am 
profoundly grateful to each and every one of you for your friendship. To receive this award that carries the name of one giant in the land and a gathering that invokes the name of another is, of course, high honor. It is also humbling and challenging. This year we celebrate the 50th anniversary of Newt Minow's brave and visionary, quote, Bass Wasteland speech, better titled, as you said. It was 1961 when Nell's dad reminded the captains of the media industry that, quote, first, the people own the air, and they own it as much in prime evening time as they do at 6 o'clock Sunday morning. For every hour that the people give you, you owe them something, and I intend to see that your debt is paid in service, end quote. Talk about courage. Talk about strength of message. Talk about character. The other giant in whose name we gather today is Everett Parker. He breathed life into equal opportunity in parts of our media where prejudice and worse not only rode the airwaves, but also poisoned people's hearts. Everett Parker had a dream, and he brought that dream a long and mighty step toward fulfillment, and he inspires us still. When I became a commissioner more than a decade ago, these were the visions and dreams that I wanted to help realize. There were, there are those who have disagreed with me, sometimes more than occasionally. But I hope no one ever doubted my desire to make our media as transformative as Everett Parker and Newt Minow knew that it could be. So much of their challenge remains. But these are battles not only worth fighting, they are battles essential to fight if we're going to redeem the promise of America. We've come a long way, and many of you in this room have made truly significant contributions to building a better society. But we still have so many miles to go to build the media that democracy requires. Right now we have too little substance and too much fluff in our media. Democracy is not well served by fluff. Therein is our challenge, yours and mine, to take the visions shared with us by Newt Menno and Everett Parker, to build on the progress these giants made, and to work for and to insist upon a media environment that informs us with real news and information, that reflects and encourages the wondrous diversity of this land, and that reinforces our system of self-government. When I take my leave of the FCC later this year, I'm not leaving these issues. I can never do that. And I will continue to be inspired by visions of Newton Minow and Everett Parker and by so many of you in this audience who have worked long and hard to help realize those visions. I will continue to look to you for leadership and creativity and working to mobilize citizen action so that democratic change can come the only way it ever comes, from the grassroots of this nation. Newt Menno told us half a century ago, quote, you must help prepare a generation for great decisions. You must help a great nation fulfill its future, end quote. I receive this award today with that challenge as my guiding light, and I thank you for an honor that I will always cherish. Thank you very much.